Now this would have to be one of my favorite transitions that he's ever done. It's this transition here where it goes from this cocktail being poured into a waterfall. It's just done really well. Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. Now I haven't been that active on the video front lately, mainly because I've been working nonstop on my Animation Master course. I already have my early bird group going through the course and that will be going officially launching in a few weeks. So make sure you're on that email list. I'll put that link down in the description below so you get notified as soon as that goes live. Now I realized when looking through my videos that I haven't done a Ben TK analysis video in quite some time. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to dive in on one of his more recent videos here, the Sydney travel video. Now straight from the get go, we have this really nice transition backwards through these binoculars. Let's have a closer look here. So he's got this first shot, then he's starting to fade on a black layer. He's got this cutout, which could just be a black layer with basically a mask drawn in the outline of the binoculars. Then he's probably put some sort of 3D camera over the top of that as it's going backwards through the binoculars. And here, it looks like we've got the inside of the binoculars. Now this could just be a 2D layer that he's put in a three dimensional space and having the camera fly back past it. So it could just be some metal texture or something that's been cut to that shape. And then he's put it upright and had that camera fly past it to get that effect. Then he's got a video clip here of this girl looking through the binoculars. He's probably started the gimbal pretty close as the girl's looking through the binoculars. And then he's just pulled the gimbal back. Then he's added a digital zoom over the top to kind of zoom into those binocular lenses and connect it with the other shot. This is another great transition here. And he's got a great behind the scenes video, which you should also go and check out. He explains a little bit about how he's done some of these particular effects. He's got this blue electricity effect that sort of moves up along his arm. I would say most likely this is some sort of plug-in. The ones I'm thinking of are either from Red Giant or I'm thinking of the ones from Boris FX. If you downloaded those plugins, there's lots of tutorials out there online which you can find which will show you how to use those different plugins to create those effects. He's got a nice little warp zoom here into the phone. And I really like this cut here between these two shots. In his behind the scenes clip, he shows you a little bit of insight into how he did this, but it's essentially made up of two separate shots. So he has the camera locked off on a tripod. He then films that particular clip with the guy doing the action. And then they remove that guy and then he basically has sort of the papers flying down. He has someone spinning the chair and he then moves that camera in to kind of give it that illusion like it wasn't shot on a tripod. At the start here, he's also added that, that zoom effect to the stationary camera shot. And then he's kind of molded the two here by blending those two shots nicely together. But because they're on a tripod and they're stationary, there shouldn't be too much to blend together because it should just seamlessly match. This is another great little effect here where we've got the jump change in the clothes. In order to really make this effect work, it's really essential that you don't move the camera. So it needs to be on some sort of tripod and locked off in between your takes. So one thing that I noticed that Ben does with his is he'll basically have it set up on the tripod. And then once he's filmed a clip, he'll then pick the tripod up and move it near the end of the clip. So you can see this would be clip number one here. And then in the second clip, once the guy's changed, we've got clip number two. He then picks up the tripod and you can see he's got a little bit of movement. Over the top of the whole thing, he's also added a bit of that camera movement by bringing the, a slow zoom over the top and also just added a little bit of a wiggle effect over the top just to kind of give it that handheld movement. You could do that by adding a wiggle effect. There's wiggle expressions built into After Effects, which you can also drag in and mess around with those to get that desired effect. You basically need to film your first shot. You ne then need to get your actor out. He needs to change clothes. He needs to move back into that shot and you need to try and get him in that exact same position or very close to his original position. And what you then need to do is you need to then try and blend the two shots. 
Cleverly, what he's done here is he's taken the clothes or he's cut the clothes by masking them out from the, sh the last frame of that shot before and use them as a nice little sort of transition point or to hide that transition between that jump cut. So you can see between these two shots right here where the frame actually cuts, we've got that those clothes from the original. It kind of helps not only hide that jump cut, but it also just makes it a bit more seamless. Like you've got something that's carrying all the way through. Another little thing that I always look for in these shots is I look around the edges of the frame because I'm always looking Okay, if you're gonna jump cut, things are gonna slightly change. One thing I've noticed here is the sky and the clouds would have also changed a little bit. So you can see if you look very closely, there is a slight change in the clouds. And he's also added a fade over the top by drawing some mask. He's probably drawn a mask over this parts that don't change and then slowly faded on the parts that do. That's one way you could probably do that, but you have to fade those two shots to make them work essentially. Now, if you're new to After Effects or you want to learn how to create really awesome video effects, then definitely check out my Motion Effects Pro course. It walks you through all the good stuff for how to make your videos stand out with the power of video effects. Now, if you're interested in that, you can check that out via the link in the description below. Now, this would have to be one of my favorite transitions that he's ever done. It's this transition here where it goes from this cocktail being poured into a waterfall. It's just done really well. Now for how I think it's been done, I think that this is one shot here obviously where the drink's being poured through. As that funnel's then being pulled up, he's kind of drawn a mask over that stream so that we've separated that stream out of that video. He's then got another mask, so that's the first mask there. He's got another mask which separates this cup out of that frame or the last frame that we had. What he's done on that glass is he's also added a color shift. So he's added, um, basically put your Lumetri color on it. You then drag it up to kind of match the color of that second shot. So it kind of goes into this sort of green. So it starts off like a yellow and then it kind of goes into this green sort of color. That really helps match between the foreground here and the background, right? So we're matching to those colors. The other thing he's also added is it looks like he's added a bit more of a blur to that. And then he's animated that glass going down. So he's essentially, because he's cut it out, he can just animate it by using some position keyframes there to kind of animate that out. Then with that stream, what he's also done is he's matched that stream by also having a mask there between that and lined it up nicely, that shot above, with the waterfall in the background. And he's also done the same thing to the waterfall. He's added that sort of Lumetri color hue shift. So at the height of that transition, it's nice and yellow to match to the original shot and then transitions back into its original color. Now what I've done for you over in After Effects is I've just taken those principles and I've put them into my own sort of quick example here just to demonstrate a few of those things. Now I always make it sound like it's quite easy to do this, but there is quite a lot going on, right? There's nothing to take away from the amount of work that Ben does into these videos and these transitions. It takes a lot of skill and time to get them to look really good, but I'm just demonstrating some of those principles that I was talking about of a way that you could approach doing an effect like this. It doesn't mean that this is the way that Ben's done it, but this could be one way that you could go about it. So I've started with this video clip here of the drink being poured into the glass. I've then overlaid this waterfall background and I've added a bit of a blur effect over the top to try and get it to match to my original clip. What I've also done is I've added a luma key over the top and that helps remove the darker part of the image, which is the sides essentially trying to isolate the waterfall part of that shot. I've then got a bit of an opacity transition here to sort of fade it on over the top of that clip. Then what I've done is I've drawn a mask around another layer to isolate that stream, so that waterfall from the second shot. And I've also added a Lumetri color here to, to do what we talked about in the original part, 
to try and create that hue shift going across. And I've added a nice sort of fade transition of that effect. So it sort of starts off to try and match my original clip, then it fades back to its original state. Another thing I did here was I wanted to make it look like that waterfall was part of that original stream. So to do that, I basically added the overlay blending mode and you can see the effect that it's done. It's made it look like it's part of that original stream. The last thing I did here was I added that cup over the top. I drew a mask, which went around the outside of my cup. So I had that on its own isolated layer. I also added another mask going over the waterfall stream because I wanted that stream to kind of sit over the top of that glass so I could isolate that. And then I also added the Lemetri color again to kind of transition it from its original state, which is more of a yellow tone into a green tone to match the background of my second clip. And then I simply created some position keyframes and then animated that cup down to animate it out of frame to get that final transition. And then when I play it back, then I've got that finished effect. Now, obviously it would work a lot better if I had some better quality clips to work with, but that might help you to understand a bit more of that process instead of me just saying, okay, do this and do that. That's how I would analyze something and then take those and apply it to some different clips inside of After Effects. So there's my analysis of that Ben TK video. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can check out more videos just like this one over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.